am going to do a little landscape design consult for a friend of mine who was wanting to kind of make some improvements to his landscape stuff and he didn't want to waste you know hundreds if not thousands of dollars on a bunch of random stuff from Home Depot that he has no clue about so he asked me for some help so right here this is um, on the left side of the front door um, right on the left side of the front door there's a there is a blue point juniper bush I'm not a real big fan of these guys. They're really spiky and pokey. They grow really fast. They get bugs and uh, problems and stuff. And a lot of times they don't do do great. They will, cannon will get really big, really out of control if you don't stay on top of trimming them. So if you want to take, there's one on both sides of the front door. If you wanted to take this out and get rid of it, it wouldn't hurt my feelings a bit. If you want to keep it, that's fine. There's a light for the front porch right here. Don't let this thing get anywhere near that light. Keep it trimmed down fairly low. Um, I normally recommend trying to keep things trimmed at a comfortable level to actually get hedge trimmers on. Okay, I really don't like using ladders and hedge trimmers in flower beds and all because it's a pain, it takes forever, it's somewhat dangerous. I just don't like to do it. We have kind of a, a hedge trimmer on a long extension that we can get, you know, fairly high up without having to use a ladder, and that, that works pretty good. But um, just, you know, keep this thing somewhat where it's at. Treat it with an insecticide. You probably need to get a good systemic insecticide. Read the label and apply that on a regular basis based off of the schedule <clears throat> on, the, uh, on the label. Okay. There's an existing boxwood hedge that runs right here. Um, I'm okay with that. It doesn't bother me. It's there. I wouldn't waste my, my time and money ripping all that out and doing something different. I'd just leave it. Try to make it as healthy as you can. Right here is a downspout off their gutter. I'm not sure if the gutter came in after the fact and they ripped this bush out that was right here, possibly even two boxwoods. Um, but I would assume that this gutter dumps out and washes the mulch out right here. So I would put, I would probably try to go ahead and put another boxwood, maybe even two, right in this spot and just plant it right in front of that gutter. Okay, and then at the base of the gutter and right at the base of this boxwood, I would come in with some river rock. Put some river rock in here so that your mulch doesn't wash out. I recommend doing like four inch river rock uh, minimum. If it's a little bit bigger than that, that's okay. If you do it much smaller than that, it will wash out and move around and just won't work very well. Um, this is some type of pompous grass. And I really don't like the pompous grass. Um, it's just the center of pompous grass dies out and then the outside kind of gets bigger and farther out, you know, year to year. And you have to like go in there, cut it down, then shovel it up and then like replant it in the center to keep it kind of right where it's at. I don't like where that thing is planted. It's super random and out of place. And I just don't feel that there's really any reason that you would need or want this, you know, random pompous grass. So I would dig that thing up and throw it away. If there's a spot back here that needs more boxwoods, then I would just, you know, fill in, you know, with the boxwoods back here if there's a void spot in there. Um, <clears throat> moving on down the line here, it looks like there was probably maybe even two boxwoods right here that died or they look about half dead or dying. Go ahead and replace those. Um, as far as boxwoods go, I mean, there are a lot of different varieties, and in Lubbock, boxwoods can and will die out fairly easy. They're not my favorite foundation planting shrub like this, but um, they can and will, you know, work okay. This property is in Oklahoma, and things grow a lot better in Oklahoma than they do in Lubbock, where I'm at. So, just try to try to get a good variety from a local nursery, whatever they recommend. 
Um, we use Winter Gym here that seems to work better than most. Um, this flower bed has a border planting of monkey grass or liriope. Some people pronounce it liripe, liropi. A lot of different kind of slang names for this stuff. Um, I don't have a problem with this grass. Um, it's an ornamental that is a perennial. It comes back every year in the winter time. Depending on how bad the winters are, it, it will usually get burned down and look pretty bad like it does um, here. So what you want to do is you want to rake all the mulch back away from this um, liropi and cut it down. I prefer using a line trimmer or a weed eater and just cutting it all the way down to the ground, all the way as good as you can, and then rake all the stuff out, clean it all up, and then you can move your mulch back in. There's probably some spots in here that you need to fill in, and you need to plant a few more of these guys so that this is all solid and consistent throughout this entire edge. <clears throat> Next, there are three boulder rocks in here that Relative to the size of this house and how big and tall this house is from the front, these rocks are tiny and way out of scale. I don't really like boulders and rocks very much, especially in beds that are somewhat small. And you kind of give up opportunities for other plants because of these rocks. And I just don't think the rocks really do anything for you. Some people might try to put them in and around the river rock and around the you know downspout and all, but... I just personally don't really like random out of place rocks on properties, um, especially in areas that just don't naturally have rocks. And it's like, it's nothing but, you know, dirt and grass and, you know, whatever plants you bring in. In areas that have a lot of native rocks and you can see rocks, you know, native around the area, I mean, it's, it's cool to use that. But to bring them into a yard like this and have them like this, I, I just wouldn't, I would. I'd throw them away. I'd give them to my mom because she loves rocks, but yeah, I'd get rid of them. Um, right here in the middle of this bed, right where this boulder is essentially, I think there might be some knockout roses or some type of plants in here that, that would probably give you a little bit of summer color, but the pictures that I have and all, they're just not clear enough for me to tell. Um, but <clears throat> whether <coughs> there are or not, I don't really care. I would plant one of my favorite plants right here, which is a little gem magnolia tree. Okay, it's a variety of magnolia that, that doesn't get real big. It grows relatively slow and they're semi, if not completely evergreen, and they do really, really good. And I think, you know, most all houses that have opportunities, you know, like this, I would recommend, you know, using one of these guys. Um, another thing that I think would fit in here is some hydrangea. This is perfect based off of the sun and the shade and all for hydrangeas. They, hydrangeas don't do great in Lubbock, um, but they do, do good in Oklahoma most of the time. So I would, I would try to get three hydrangeas in here around this little mit, little gym magnolia. And we try not to plant like, you know, in twos and even numbers. We try to plant in odd numbers and try to, you know, kind of have things a little bit more naturally spaced out. Um, next on here, I think that you would have opportunities to plant some other either perennial or annual flowers of some kind. We use a lot of lantana in Lubbock because it's really, really tough. It gives you good um, color every year, and I just hardly ever have problems with that stuff. I recommend um, New Gold, which is a kind of the traditional yellow gold color. They are very hardy. They are more of the, the most low growing um, of the lantana varieties. Um, some of the varieties of lantana get really big and tall and bushy and you end up having to take a hedge trimmer and like shear them back all the time. So that would be a good option. 